Right, so hello and welcome back to another 90 Day Fiancé video on Arthur TV. So last time out, we looked at two couples from 90 Day Fiancé's spin-off series, 90 Day Fiancé The Other Way. We looked at 51-year-old Laura and her 29-year-old Tunisian boyfriend Aladdin, and 60-year-old Jenny, who had been catfished by someone she thought was a 25-year-old named Michael, but was actually a 30-year-old man from India called Samit. Now that we've finished the Jenny and Samit story from season 1, it's time to find out what happened to Laura as she prepares to leave for Qatar to be with Aladdin. In the first video we heard a lot from Laura. It was the first few episodes of the series and the camera crew was still in the US, so other than eavesdropping on a couple of FaceTime calls, we didn't really have a chance to properly meet Aladdin. But now the season has progressed and we finally get the chance to meet Aladdin face to face and hear his side of the story. I'm Maladan, I'm 29 years old. I'm from Tunisia, but I'm living in Qatar. I am Muslim and I work as a personal trainer. So this is where it all gets confusing again. In part one, Laura's like, oh, he's this handsome young guy from Tunisia. What is he looking at me for? And I joked that it was for a green card. No disrespect to Tunisia, they've obviously been quite a success story since the Arab Spring. But, you know, with the American dream being an ideal that's alive and kicking in much of the world, and America's visa system being the way it is, I don't think it's unreasonable to think that the partner from abroad might just be after a green card. Especially with some of the couples we've seen on this show in the past. But then, Aladdin introduces himself, and it starts to make less sense. I think Laura's already mentioned quite a few of these things, but seeing them all in person... Like, he lives in Qatar, which is obviously one of the wealthiest countries in the world. He's smart, he's well dressed, he's well groomed, he's well spoken, he's got a decent job and it's like what is going on here? Maybe it's not for a green card after all. But then what is it? Does he actually like Laura? And they have a lot of girlfriends before. <laughs> but then I meet my wife Laura. She make me happy and sometimes make me crazy. <laughs> Some people, you know, they will argue because she's more old than you. But she's what I like. Blue eyes and the blonde. I chose Laura because I love her. I mean, it kind of makes sense. I mean, obviously he's a good looking guy, so he probably could have got a blonde haired, blue eyed girl his own age. But if she's his type and they get on well, maybe the other things just aren't an issue for him. And to be fair, I can respect that. First time I will meet her personally. I, feel, I think she's a more short and like that, but she's more beautiful than the pictures, you know? Just casually calls her short and fat on national TV, but I guess that doesn't seem to faze him. So when I met her the third day, I can't even wait. I want to propose for her because we talk with each other online and I love her already and she loves me, I know this. So I tell her, do you want to marry me? She accepts, you know, and we married in the day nine. Oh my god, I still can't believe they married nine days after meeting each other just so they could sleep together. You know, I wish we had more Ludwig on this show because those precious few moments where he was spending the entire time just face palming and telling terrible dad jokes were definitely some of the season's best bits. You already married him. Yeah, and nine days after I met him. <laughs> In Tunisia, it's not allowed, you know, to sleep together before the wedding. But after we get married, we will have a lot of jiggy jiggy. Yeah, and lots of jiggy jiggy. <laughs> I actually really like Aladdin, but oh my god, it makes me cringe so much when he talks about having jiggy jiggy with Laura. By the way, if you're wondering why he's talking about having a wedding and getting married, even though they're already married, it's because they got officially married on paper, but they haven't yet had the cultural wedding in his hometown in Tunisia, which is coming up later on. In a few days, finally, my wife, she will join me here in Qatar. Woohoo! Thanks God for this. I'm really happy, you know, because uh, I don't want to miss her anymore, you know? I want her to be with me ever, you know? So it seemed up until this point that things were going pretty smoothly between the couple. We already saw from part one how head over heels Laura was with Aladdin, and now it looks like Aladdin has pretty strong feelings for Laura too. But even in genuine relationships, people have problems, and these guys have a lot of them. Sometimes she gets jealous. Not sometime. Always she jealous. <laughs> sometimes, you know, I need to send her a picture before I show her I am with who, you know? How are you? I am tired. 
she have a problem for trust, you know, because she take uh, some things from her old experience, you know, and she put on me now. Okay, I love you. Take care, baby. Love you too, sweetie. Bye. <laughs> bye bye. If you remember from part one, the old experience that he's talking about is her getting cheated on by her husband of eight years. Although she did end up coming up with a pretty iconic scheme to get him to shave his own head, it's not really been something that she's been able to properly overcome. Social media, oh my God. This is the problem always between us, you know? Every new follow I have, we argue about. Especially when it's uh, female side, you know? Tell me, Allah Rahma, why are you going to block me? Then tell me, what's going on? وش كون هذا؟ يا ولا غير لورا مغيرك I definitely think the distance made the trust issues a lot harder. Being in a relationship with someone out of her league and in a completely different country and then seeing him interact with other girls on social media must have been pretty hard for Laura, especially given she's got some pretty deep wounds from past experiences. But Aladdin's response to her jealousy definitely doesn't help. هاي ساعات ولا ايش نعمل؟ كي تقلقني ياسر ولا لحظي نعطيها بلوك نهير <laughs> when she get mad, she talk and she not here. So I block her before she take a rest. She cool down and then I unblock her again and they start talking with her and she, she listen to me. <laughs> there is absolutely no long distance relationship problem that can be solved by blocking your partner on social media. If she's already feeling insecure and already worrying about his social media activity, that is just going to make it a hundred times worse. She don't trust me. So this is the problem always between us, you know? We argue over and over and over and over and again and again. Soon she will join me here in Qatar. The problem is coming. The problem is coming is such an ominous way to end that sentence. I can't believe how quickly it went from I don't want to miss her anymore, I want to be with her forever, to I dread her impending arrival. And if that didn't already cast a dark grey cloud over her arrival, it gets worse. Now she will be with me and I am the man she needs to answer to me. And if she don't, it will be a big problem in our relationship. As soon as he said it, you just knew it was going to be a huge problem to come. In these 90 Day Fiancé episodes, so many couples end up having massive arguments over the power balance between men and women and their roles in a relationship because the cultures just are so different. And when they're both so set in their ways and just not willing to compromise, it's just a disaster waiting to happen. And just to show how different these guys are culturally, ahead of her trip to Qatar, Laura is out shopping somewhere special. Hi, welcome to Farabella. How can Thank I help you, you today? I kind of would like to look around and see what you have. Before I go to Qatar, I'm going to buy a couple of items that will really spice up things in the bedroom. My fiance is Arabic. Um, he lives in Qatar. So I just feel like he could use a little bit of assistance when it comes to the bedroom. Okay. You know, I'd almost completely forgotten that she pronounces Qatar like that. I tried to figure out if it was an American thing to pronounce Qatar with a G, but I think she's just stupid. <laughs> also, her saying that he's Arabic so he needs some assistance in the bedroom is definitely a bold statement to make. This show has a wide audience and I'm sure there'll be a lot of Arabs watching finding that quite offensive. Sex in Qatar is looked upon very differently than it is here in America. It's almost in a way like a dirty thing. Men of his culture aren't exactly adventurous. Unfortunately, sometimes I have faked it to get it over with. <laughs> so I want to get him at a spot in intimacy where I'm having as much of a good time as he's having. And it turns out what she means exactly by this is that he's not willing to perform certain tasks to help her reach a certain goal, if you know what I mean. But Aladdin wasn't about to get called out on national TV or let Arab men take the jab without a response. So he replied to an Instagram comment later on saying, just because I refuse to eat bad sushi doesn't mean that I don't enjoy fish. That makes me feel physically ill. Shots fired, right? I also think that she must not rate his knowledge in the bedroom very highly because she also bought him a sex for dummies book. One of the instructional manuals we have is Sex for Dummies, which is really popular. I mean, not that I'm saying he's a dummy, but he sure could use a book yeah. like this. Can you imagine getting gifted that by your partner? You'd be so wounded. I'm making this huge move to Qatar where 
It's a male dominant culture in the bedroom. And our relationship is not going to be like that. I really hope that he has an open mind and he's receptive to this. There you go. Awesome. You know, she seems pretty sure that the relationship isn't gonna be male dominated, but given he said, I'm the man and she's gonna answer to me, something tells me that's not gonna go down well with Aladdin. Also, you know, I think this whole thing is poor from Laura. I obviously have no problem with her buying back massages or informative books. Like if it's gonna make her private life more enjoyable, more power to her, but I think it's pretty disrespectful to do it on national TV. Like saying Aladdin needs assistance in the bedroom, whatever way she meant it, that's so embarrassing for him. If a girl I was seeing said something like that in front of millions of people, I'd be mortified. Thankfully, I make YouTube videos in my bedroom for a living, so I guess I haven't really got anything to worry about for a while, hey? Anyway, before Laura heads off for Qatar and has to face all of these problems, she first has to deal with the hardest one of all, her son. Liam, he has not accepted my relationship with Aladdin, and they have not met each other. Liam just goes running every time I suggest him to talk to Aladdin. Aladdin is 29 and my son is 21. The eight year age difference has bothered Liam, definitely. If the age difference bothered him, I wonder how he took the news that the whole thing was gonna be televised. I always think about how weird the kids must feel about one of their parents going on the show. I think half the reason people watch this show is because you just know with most of the couples it's not gonna last. Like it's always so obvious that one of the partners is in it for the money, the fame or the green card and it almost always ends in heartbreak. Knowing that there was a risk that your mum or dad might be the laughing stock of the nation and have everyone being like, how did you not see that that was gonna happen? I just find it so embarrassing. Like if I was her son, I genuinely wouldn't want to get involved. The first time you went to Qatar, you stayed there for three months, and I didn't know why you were over there. You were very deceptive about it. Because I know that you're going to judge him. Yeah, but I've always judged all your other boyfriends as well, because I've dealt with all of them. You can end up with another total douche. Oh, it really doesn't seem like he's giving Aladdin much of a chance, but Laura has not helped the situation. You'd think if your only son didn't get on well with your previous partners, you'd at least make an effort to make a good first impression. But given Aladdin's from another country and is quite a lot younger, I'm guessing she wanted to wait until things got serious before telling him. She didn't even introduce me to this guy. I barely knew anything about him because she knew I'd be upset about it. We're such close friends and yet she would hide such a big thing from me. And it was just too much for me to handle. And then you come back in September and you tell me that you got married. I think there's definitely a point between meeting someone and marrying them that it's serious enough to mention it to your son. I mean, I know it's not his decision or his life, but I'm sure you would have appreciated at least being told. Although she did marry him after just nine days, so I'm guessing it wasn't a well thought out decision. I'm scared because you're going over to a country where women obviously don't have as many rights as, as they do here and you have a short temper, and you're stubborn. The problem is, you're the problem most of the time. I'm the problem. You're gonna do something brash, and you're gonna get yourself in trouble. Jeez, this is pretty savage from Liam, but there's a bit of a theme developing here, isn't there? Aladdin literally used the exact same word to describe Laura when he said the problem is coming, so maybe he's got a point. With the difference in the way that Aladdin and Laura see each other's roles in the relationship and how set in their ways they seem, hearing Liam say he's worried about her temper is definitely a cause for concern. You just know that this is gonna be an absolutely wild ride with so much explosive drama the second she sets foot in Qatar. But for a channel like this, that is music to our ears. It's important for you to come to my wedding because I have nobody there for me. I don't want to go to your wedding. That's disappointing. I didn't even know about this wedding in Tunisia. And so it's not that I don't want to go. It's just I think it would be too uh, emotional for me to handle. 
It's obviously rough that they're that close and he was kind of left in the dark about the whole thing. But I think a lot of the emotion comes from the fact that Liam's dad left him when he was younger. It seems like he's got some pretty deep abandonment issues that kind of only seem to get worse as the series goes on. I mean, he's not a kid anymore, but still. I think the thought of his only parent running off to Qatar to be with their new husband and leaving him all alone in America is quite an emotional thought for him. But at the same time though, if he doesn't come to the wedding and he doesn't make any effort with Aladdin, he may end up pushing his mum even further away. Kid. I do feel that I am making a decision between Liam and Aladdin. It's extremely difficult, but it's time for me to live my life. It's always interesting when people on the show talk about leaving a life that they've built over many years for a fling with an attractive younger partner from a foreign country, especially when they've got family that they're leaving behind. It kind of makes you wonder what their priorities are, but I guess it's too early to judge. I'm going to give Laura the benefit of the doubt here and say that maybe she really is in love with Aladdin, and maybe she really does see herself living happily ever after with him. Still to come, we're going to see what happens when Laura finally arrives in Qatar, and before she even steps foot on a plane, there are already doubts, tears, and burning red flags. My heart is broken. Am I making like the biggest mistake of my life? Well, I guess we're just gonna have to find out. That is unfortunately all we have time for today. So if you wanna make sure you don't miss Laura's arrival in Qatar and all the drama that follows, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out. As always, the links to my Instagram, Twitter, and other social media will be down below. So feel free to come drop me a follow to keep up with the channel, help me decide what future videos to do, or just say hi in between uploads. Thank you for watching and hopefully I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.